Good morning, my friend. It is a Thursday morning. I am really incredibly uh, happy that it's Thursday because tonight uh, our son Josh and our daughter-in-law Amber and our grandson Riker, seven-month-old Riker, are going to come. They're going to be flying from San Antonio to come visit us for a few days. And that is really uh, amazing. We haven't seen little Riker in a while, and Josh and Amber either, of course. Um, and they've never been to Nebraska. They're the only one of our kids that haven't been here yet since we moved last year. So we're really grateful. Pray for their safe arrival, please. I have, this is, of course, uh, season three. We're just starting out a new season of the podcast, and we've been um, kind of preparing some new ideas and new things for you. But I wanted to bring you back. I promised the other day on the Tuesdays with Tata episode when we had Teresa and and Vicky and Lola on the show with me and Tata, we talked a little bit about when you feel discouraged, when you feel like things aren't going right, when you feel like uh, everything's out of control, sometimes you can believe that this particular time or moment or event or situation that you found yourself in is impossible for God. Maybe it's too far. Maybe you're too far. Maybe this one thing is finally too much for him. And maybe you get to a place where you're really discouraged or you don't actually actively believe that he can solve the problem or that he's interested in solving the problem. And I kind of um, that morning had been thinking about some of those type of things because Lisa and I have been through some discouragement in our own life. And I kept remembering these different places in Scripture where God did impossible things, but because He did them, that means they are possible, right? So if if you don't think it's possible, for example, for an axe head to float, but God makes one float in the Scripture for the prophet when He needs it, then that is a possible thing, actually. So that therefore, if your disease is impossible to cure, God says pray for it, that means it is possible for Him to cure it. It's within His possibility, if you think this particular situation, this moment, this financial situation, this marriage issue, this pornography addiction, this inability to get your finances in order, or this bill that you didn't expect, if, if those things are impossible, maybe they're not. Maybe you just need to understand and think a little bit differently about who your God actually is and how he is actually sovereign over everything, all the events of your life. He's sovereign over physics. He's sovereign over medicine. He's sovereign over weather. And I just want to give you today, this is a short little podcast. It's going to be, I don't know, five or ten minutes probably. I tend to ramble, so maybe 15 minutes. Um, and I'm not scripted, but I did write down all these scriptures and all that, that popped into my head, the stories from the Bible that I remembered that were impossible things that God made possible. And I just went and found them. So I'm going to give you kind of a list uh, we're not going to expound on any of them greatly. I'm just going to give you a list of several times in Scripture when God did impossible things, which means they are possible, and therefore you could be able to apply the idea in your own life that the impossible situation you're in is actually possible for God to solve. But in order to do that kind of thing, just as an aside, if you want to take the power of Scripture, you've got to take the Scripture. In other words, if you want to have Scripture inside you to arm you and remind you and inspire you and strengthen you against the storms of life and against the battles that you'll fight, you need to spend some time reading it. So I would say as a form of self-brain surgery, I would say read your Bible, <laughs> read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. It's the only book you will ever read that comes back to you when you need it and teaches you more than you thought it taught you the first time you read it. You'll never find another book that's living and active like that. And that's why the Bible calls it the sword of the Spirit. It's a, it's a weapon you can use to get through your life. And I'm going to give you some examples in Scripture today that you can use, write them down, memorize them. I'll put them in the show notes of times when God did impossible things, which makes them possible because they have been done. And so, therefore, God can do impossible things in your life, too, when you need it. But if you want to get that kind of impossible, possible thing— you have to start today. Hey, friend, I'm so glad to have you listening today. I am Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible and amazing wife, Lisa Warren, my father-in-law, Dennis Tata McDonald, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get that done, you can get the show notes and more at my website wlewarnmd.com and if you like the show please share it with your friends this is a particular episode you could share with your friends who are struggling with things that seem impossible because they're not with our god all things are possible i'm dr lee warren here to help you change your mind so you can change your life let's get after it 
Okay, you ready for this list? Here we go. This is a list of scripture of times when God made impossible things actually possible. Now, I want to remind you of a book that I read. I've mentioned it to you several times before. Chris Voss was an FBI hostage negotiator, and he wrote a book called Never Split the Difference. And one of the lines that has stuck with me from that book was, when the pressure's on, you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to your highest level of preparation. So in other words, you don't tend to become some superhero when you're under pressure. You tend to revert back to your training and preparation. And so one of the things, since you know you're going to have battles and hard times and massive things come along in your life, one of the ways you could get ahead of the game would be to prepare yourself. Prepare your heart, prepare your mind with some ideas and some decisions about who your God is and who you are and how you're going to handle things when they pop up before you get into the trouble, right? So in other words, adding some of these scriptures into your heart now, even if you're not in the middle of some impossible thing, would actually help you when you do deal with the impossible thing. Does that make sense? So that's what I want to encourage you with today. Like we're going to learn some things in scripture when God said, hey, you think that's impossible? It's not impossible for me. Let me just run through a list of impossible, possible things. So God, three times in the Old Testament, talks about he'll whistle. One is he, he shows us his sovereignty over the things that he's created. When he needs flies to come and create a plague for him, he whistles, and the flies in Egypt come to him. That's in Zechariah ten eight. When he needs bees to come and do something, pollinate something, or, or solve a problem, or scare somebody off, he whistles in Isaiah five twenty six, and the bees come. Right. In Isaiah seven eighteen, he whistles for people when he needs his people to come and do something. He whistles and they come. So Zechariah 10, 8, Isaiah 5, 26 and Isaiah 7, 8, uh, 7, 18 are all different times when you think God's not paying attention. You think everything's out of control. And all of a sudden he just whistles. It's not even a big deal to him. He's like, come on. And everybody comes and runs and does what he needs. Bees, flies, people, nations, kings. Answer God when he needs them. So nobody, no situation, no nation, no animal, no insect is out of his control. And it might seem impossible, but God can call them with just a little whistle. And sometimes it might need to be louder than that. In Hosea 11.10, he says, I will roar like a lion and my people will come. So if you think that people are out of God's control, that the nation's too far gone, that some political party is too far gone, when God's ready for them, he will roar like a lion and they will come, Hosea 11.10. And sometimes you think God's not paying attention, like he has forgotten you, he's not interested in you. Well, Isaiah 30.18 says that the, <clears throat> the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. So you might think that it's impossible for the God of the universe to actually care about an individual small person in Nebraska or in Uganda or wherever you are today. But the fact is the God of the universe who made you says he longs to have an opportunity to get up out of his chair, off of his throne, and come and take care of you when you need it. So that's Isaiah thirty eighteen. It's not impossible. God notices you and he cares about you. In fact, Second Chronicles 16, 9 says the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro across the earth to search out those whose hearts are completely his and strongly support them. So that means when you feel like you need some support and your spouse or your friends or your employer or your parents or your siblings have abandoned you and you feel all alone, well, guess what? God says he is ready to, he is actually actively looking to strongly support you in those times. So all you need to do is call out for him and he will help you. In fact, it's not even so important that, that you call out to him because he already knows you're going to be in the situation. He's already planning on how he's going to help you when you do call because in Isaiah 46.10, he says, I see the end from the beginning. God's not surprised at the situation in which you found yourself, friend. He's not surprised by the California recall or wildfires or pandemics or any of those things. God knows the end from the beginning. And he says further in Isaiah 46, I finish what I start. It's going to end like I say it will end. God basically calls his shots. It's not impossible, the situation you're in, because God's already said how it's going to end. God's already got the end in mind from the beginning of it. Sometimes you lose something or something happens and it feels completely impossible for it to be handled. 
right? Your car gets stolen. Something something happens. You, you get a diagnosis. It's impossible. And it's just not possible for you to survive it or recover from it. It's not going to work out. Well, there's a story in 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7, where the prophet is uh, chopping wood and the axe head falls off and falls in a river. And he says, oh, no, I borrowed that from somebody else. I'm going to be in trouble. And boom, God makes it float to the surface. So against physics, right? Metal does not float, right? Well, it does if God says for it to. God controls physics, electrons, protons, gravity, water, buoyancy. God controls everything. So he can certainly weigh in on the situation you're in right now. It's not impossible. Second Kings two twenty three through twenty five shows us an example of how God's sovereign again over wildlife. There's a story of Elisha the prophet and a bunch of he's walking down the road and a bunch of teenagers come and they're mocking him. And it's not a silly little story like you might hear it in Sunday school sometimes. They they come out and they say, Go up you bald head, go up you bald head and God uh, or the prophet Elisha curses them, which doesn't mean he cusses them out. It means he calls for God to remove his hand of protection from them. He, it's the opposite of a blessing. It's a curse. It's to say, God, these people are dishonoring you by dishonoring your prophet. Now note in the story in Second Kings uh, 2, 23 through 25, Elisha does not ask God to punish these people. He just curses them and says that what you're doing is dishonoring God. And what happens is the people, are the, the boys, the, the young men, it says, are basically saying, you need to get out of here and go on and disappear and die like Elijah did. Go up, meaning, the, but like ascend to the heavens like Elijah did and leave us alone. They wanted to be left alone in their sin, left alone in their lives. They didn't want God to be bothering them with the prophet, and so they were dishonoring him. And God sent two she-bears, it says, female bears, all of a sudden showed up and mauled these boys. It didn't say it killed them, but it says the she-bears tore up these 42 young men. So God is in control of even wildlife. So you say, well, there's there's a situation I'm in, and, and it's just too much. You know, it's, it's too much. Nothing can help me. Well, God can just nudge a bear. God can call for a fly. God can send bees. God can call for a bird of prey. God can send for a nation. God can do anything. It's not too big for him. If, if you feel like you're, there's an obstacle in front of you that you cannot possibly get over, well, guess what? He'll knock down walls. Joshua 6, he knocked down the walls of the city of Jericho. And three different times, in fact, four different times in Scripture, let's see, Genesis 1, 6, Exodus 14, Joshua 4, 10, 2 Kings 2, and 2 Kings 2, 13 and 14. So five times in Scripture, we're told God parts waters. The first one's in Genesis where he creates land by parting the oceans. So you think that this situation in front of you is too big? God can say, hey, ocean, move over there. Ocean, move over there. Let me have some dry land. Boom, it happens. There's two different times when he parts the waters for the people of Israel escaping Egypt. Exodus 14, he parts the Red Sea. Joshua 14, he parts Jordan to let them into the promised land. And over in Second Kings, he helps both Elijah and Elisha cross the Jordan on dry ground. Two different times, he splits the Jordan in half. So any obstacle in front of you is obligated to obey the word of the Lord. So there's no obstacle, mountain, river, disease, financial situation, relationship issue that's too big for God. In fact, not even time is too big for him. Joshua 10, 12 through 14 tells the story of how God held the sun still to give the Israelites more time to win the battle. He can make a day longer than it is. He's in charge of time. He's in charge of planetary and and heavenly bodies movements. He's in charge of tides, movement of the sun, rising and the falling of oceans and currents and weather patterns. And all those things are under his control. So the little situation that you're in, it feels impossible for you. It's not. In fact, even if you feel like there's nobody possibly left on the earth that can help you, like Ezekiel felt in chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel, God can say, okay, well, maybe you are alone. I'll raise up all those dry bones out in that valley and turn them back into living people who will help you solve the situation. God's even sovereign over dead things. He's sovereign over dried up old bones. He's certainly able to help you in the situation you're in. And if he can't do it with people, he can send angels. Daniel 10 tells the story of how Daniel is alone and the angel shows up and said, hey, I've been listening to your prayer from the start. I had to go deal with this other situation. I've been hearing you the whole time and here I am. God sends angels sometimes, ministering spirits, the New Testament calls them. So even if you feel all alone, even if there's not an army of dry bones for God to raise up, he can send you an angel or some help. 
If you feel like this financial situation is impossible, Matthew seventeen twenty four through 27 tells the story of how they needed to pay their taxes. And Jesus just pulled a fish out of the ocean, and the coin he needed to pay the taxes was in the mouth of the fish. I'm not telling you to go fishing when you need to pay your bills. I'm just telling you that God can provide a way to take care of you. He also used a fish, remember, in Jonah chapter 1 and 2 to swallow the prophet. So sometimes he uses his creation to teach us lessons or remind us of things or transport us from one place to another or help us in some way or correct us in some way. And sometimes he uses his creation in a miraculous way to feed us and take care of us and give us nutrition. Exodus 16 tells the story of how he sent manna and quail to the people when they were hungry in the desert. And in Exodus 17, when they were thirsty, he sent water from a rock. So there, when it seems impossible and you're going to starve to death, you're so thirsty for something in your life to solve a problem for you or comfort you in some way, God can produce it, even if there's nothing there that seems like it could be produced from. And you're in a desert. All there is is a rock. God can bring life, water, and food from any situation for you. Of course, metaphorically and real. He, did, he fed 5,000 people with, with uh, five loaves and two fishes, right? In Mark chapter 6, that story is in all four of the Gospels, how God fed a whole crowd of people from a little bitty amount of food. God makes wine when the party is running out of wine in John chapter 2. He gives the widow oil that will never run out in 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. God will provide, okay? No matter how big the situation is, no matter how desperate it seems to be, no matter how lonely you are, no matter how empty you are, no matter how hungry or thirsty you are or how afraid or injured you are, God can make a way. He raises the dead, seven, Luke 7, Luke 8, John 11, all over the New Testament different times when he's sovereign even over death. He's sovereign over weather. Matthew 8, he calms the storm with a word. In Matthew 14, he walks on the water. So you might think, well, that's all well and good, but I'm, you know, I'm a long way from God. I'm, I'm, it's so far away, I might as well be across the ocean. He feels that far from me. Well, he'll walk across that ocean, friend. He'll get up and out of his chair and he'll walk across the ocean to help you if you just ask him to. There is no disease or disability that's too big for him. John chapter 5, he just tells the man, hey, you've been paralyzed for 38 years. Get on up. Get up. Pick up your mat and get out of here. And the man does. He is sovereign over disease. He even put an ear back together on Malchus after Peter chopped the guy's ear off in Luke chapter 22. Jesus healed the ear. I'm praying that he will heal heal my ears because I'm still having hearing issues after that shotgun injury a year ago. And it's bothering me because I can't hear music the way I used to. It, it, it's not pleasant for me to play the guitar anymore because my left ear rattles and it, it breaks my heart because that's how I worship. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person who likes to play music to God and worship with Him. And, I, and it, right now it, it's hard for me because when I play, it hurts. kind of hurts my ear. It hurts my spirit. Well, God healed ears in Luke chapter 22. I'm just praying He'll do that for me too. There's even a, a funny story when, when uh, He says, My food... And John chapter 4, my food is the work my Father gave me. So Jesus is so interested in helping you and solving the problems that you have, that, that creating the problem, uh, I'm sorry, creating solutions to the problems that you're dealing with in your life and finding a way to help you get to know Him and be saved and, and be forgiven and spend eternity with you. He's so interested and invested in that that He calls it His food. It's like He eats His homework. Right. God, God said, go down there and take care of this problem for, you know, for, for Dave, for Brian, for Lola, for Teresa, for um, Lisa, for, for Will. Go down there and take care of this. And he's so invested in it that that's it's enough for him. He's filled and satisfied with that work like it's his food. And if all that's not enough, friend, if all of those things don't show you that what's impossible is actually possible, Jesus says, OK, I'm also willing to die for you. Paul says in Romans, he's, he's willing to die, to lay down his life while you're still a sinner. He's willing to die, and he has the power not to stay dead. First Corinthians 15 and Colossians 2, he's sovereign even over death, even over his own death. And at the end of all of that, and John 17 says, he's praying for you. So Jesus, this powerful poss- person who makes, the po- makes impossible things possible, who is spending all this time working out your salvation and solving the problems of your life and being there for you to give you energy and power when you need it and dealing with all the spiritual battles you're going to face and the real life physical flesh and or flesh and bone battles he's there for you and to top it all off John 17 says he's praying for you 
He actually intercedes before the Father for you. So, friend, when it feels impossible, I just want to encourage you today, it is not impossible. This God that can do all these things is ready to help you. So quit worrying about stuff and start praying about it. Start preparing because you're not going to rise to the occasion. You're going to fall to your preparation. And that's what you need to do. It's not impossible. God makes it possible. And all you have to do is start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren Podcast is listener-supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren, patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron-only episodes, and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad-free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And go to my website, wleewarnmd.com slash voicemail to leave me a message wleewarnmd.com slash newsletter to connect to this growing community of people all over the world every Sunday and wleewarnmd.com slash prayer where you can connect with us praying with and for people all over the world pray first pray first wleewarnmd.com slash prayer the theme music for the show is make a joyful noise by Tommy Walker graciously provided for free by Tommy and the good folks at tommywalkerministries.org check it out tommywalkerministries.org and if you need prayer don't forget the prayer wall wleewarnmd.com slash prayer remember friend you can't change your life until you change your mind and you have to start today I'm Dr. Lee Warren and I'll talk to you soon God bless you and have a great day